This is Mary Malone in the USA. To the people of Israel and the Israeli soldiers, I stand with Israel. I am praying for you. God be with you. Trust Him. I'm Sarah. I'm Riley. I'm Aubrey. I'm Riot. I'm and we stand with Israel. We're from the United States and we love you guys and we're praying for you guys. Anneli from South Africa. We are praying for you, Israel, and definitely standing with you. We're from Australia. We stand with Israel. Absolutely. Christian Lebanese from Sweden, and I'm standing with Israel. God bless Israel. My name is Romel William David Bangara, and I'm from India, and I am standing with Israel. I am Lisbeth from the Netherlands, and I stand with Israel. to our Heavenly Father, the Most High Yah, in the name of our Lord and Savior. Some of y'all say Yahusha, some of y'all say Yahweh Shah, some of y'all say Jesus, right? All right, in this video, as you can see, you know, from the We Stand With Israel propaganda that is now being pushed, right? They, they're telling Christians, you know, it's a Christian thing to, you know, to do to stand with Israel. So what we're going to make sure, and in this video, you know, I don't really ask people to share the videos, but if this is going to be one of them that you need to share, I don't care if you're black, I don't care if you're white, whatever, this is the one video that you need to share so that, you know what I'm saying, your friends and family can understand, you know, because when they start this great big war between Iran and Israel, you see what I'm saying, they're trying to get as many people on board, you know, with supporting you know, Israel on the religious side with the Christians, right? And all of this is being done so that, you know, they can make you be praying for something that when it doesn't happen, you can lose your faith. It's going to be an attack on your faith, right? And this is why I want you to understand about when you say we stand with Israel, right? They are trying to brainwash Christians into supporting, you know, this fake state of Israel. So that's what I'm going to address in this video. All right. Now, before we even get started, I want to show y'all, you know, I took the picture out of my King James Bible, you know, because I want you to understand covenant. If you understand these principles, then I got some more, you know, some more uh, uh, videos to show you, you know what I mean? But if you understand the principles of the covenant, then you can see these, these Christian Zionists for who they are, as well as these Jewish Zionists for who they are. All right. But first, I want to show y'all these pictures and read from you from my Bible. All right, so this is a screenshot that I took. This is a picture of my King James Bible. And you see when we're in Leviticus chapter 26, right? And you see what it says, the law of the land, conditions of blessings, warnings of chastisement, okay? So when we go into uh, uh, Leviticus chapter 26, you know, you're going to see, we're first going to talk about the conditions of blessing, and then we're going to see the warnings of chastisement, all right? So now let's go to Leviticus chapter 26. All right. So in Leviticus chapter 26, you see where it reads. Now, that's the reason why I showed y'all the conditions of the land, you know, dwelling in the land. This is the covenant that the Most High had made with the children of Israel when he was bringing them into the land of Canaan. OK, so this is what it reads. All right. For ch chapter 26, verse one. You shall make you no idols, nor graven image, neither rear you up a standing image, neither shall you set up any image of stone in your land to bow down unto it, for I am the Lord your God. You shall keep my Sabbaths and reverence my sanctuary. I am the Lord. If you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them, then I will give you rain in due season, and the land shall yield her increase, and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. Okay, so we see in verse 3, if you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them. So that's the condition of the covenant. Okay, then I will give you rain in due season. So if you do this, then I will do that. And your threshing shall reach into the vintage, and the vintage shall reach into the sowing time, and you shall eat your bread to the full and dwell in your land safely. 
You see that? Okay. So the condition for them to dwell in the land safely, which needed to be met, is when we go back to verse three, if you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them, right? Verse six, and I will give peace in the land and you shall lie down and none shall make you afraid. And I will rid evil beasts out of the land, neither shall the sword go through your land. And you shall chase your enemies and they shall fall before you by the sword. And five of you shall chase a hundred, and a hundred of you shall put ten thousand to flight, and your enemies shall fall before you by the sword. For I will have respect unto you, and make you fruitful, and multiply you, and establish my covenant with you. So for those of you who don't know, a covenant is an agreement, right? A covenant is basically like a contract, right? So I will have respect unto you and make you fruitful and multiply you and establish my covenant or my agreement or my contract with you, right? So you got to meet your part of the conditions, right? And you shall eat old store and bring forth the old because of the new. And I set my tabernacle among you and my soul shall not abhor you, right? And I will walk among you and will be your God and you shall be my people. I am the Lord your God. God, which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt, that you should not be their bondmen. And I have broken the bonds of the bands of your yoke and made you go upright. But here's verse 14. If you will not hearken unto me and will not do all these commandments, you see that key word in there? All, A-L-L, -L, all. So the most high said, on the contrary, if you do my commandments, then I will bless you. If you don't do my commandments, then this is what's going to happen to you, right? Verse 15, and if you shall despise my statutes, or if your soul abhor my judgment, so that you will not do all my commandments. It doesn't, it, again, he repeats all my commandments, but that you break my covenant. So if you don't do all my commandments, you're breaking my covenant, okay? So if you do that, then this is what I'm going to do to you. Now, I told you, you would dwell in the land and you would be safely if you just do what I tell you. But if you don't do what I tell you, then this is what's going to happen to you, right? I also will do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror, consumption, and the burning ague, or ag, or however you pronounce it, <laughs> that shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart. And you shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemies shall eat it. And I will set my face against you and you shall be slain before your enemies they that hate you shall reign over you and you shall flee when none pursueth you right so you're going to have people that hate you reigning over you israel okay this is the covenant okay and if you will not yet for all this hearken unto me then i will punish you seven times more for your sins and i will break the pride of your power and i will make your heaven as iron and your earth as brass and your strength shall be spent in vain for your land shall not yield her increase neither shall the trees of the land yield their fruits and if you walk contrary unto me and will not hearken unto me i will bring seven times more plagues upon you according to your sins i will also send wild beasts among you which shall rob you of your children and destroy your cattle and make you few in number and your highway shall be desolate and if you will not be reformed by the by me by these things, but will walk contrary unto me, then will I also walk contrary unto you, and will punish you yet seven times for your sins. And I will bring a sword upon you that shall avenge the quarrel of my covenant. And when you are gathered together within your cities, I will send the pestilence among you, and you shall be delivered into the hand of the enemy. And when I have broken the staff of your bread, ten women shall bake your bread in one oven, and they shall deliver you your bread again by weight, and you shall eat and not be satisfied. And if you will not for all this hearken unto me, but walk contrary unto me, then I will walk contrary unto you also in fury. And I, even I, will chastise you seven times for your sins. And you shall eat the flesh of your sons, and the flesh of your daughters shall you eat. And I will destroy your high places, and cut down your images, and cast your carcasses upon the carcasses of your idols, and my soul shall abhor you. And I will make your cities waste, and bring your sanctuaries unto desolation, and I will not smell the savor of your sweet odors. And I will bring the land into desolation, meaning I'm going to kick you out of this land. 
and your enemies which dwell therein shall be astonished at it. And I will scatter you among the heathen. So this is what the Most High said he would do to Israel if Israel did not keep his commandments, right? And I will draw out a sword after you and your land shall be desolate shall and your cities waste. Then shall the land enjoy her Sabbath as long as it lieth desolate and you be in your enemy's land. Even then shall the land rest and enjoy her Sabbath. As long as it lieth desolate, it shall rest because it did not rest in your Sabbath when you dwelt upon it. And upon them that are alive are left alive of you, I will send a faintness into their hearts in the lands of their enemies. So once I kick you out and put you in the strange lands, you're still going to get punished and you're still going to get pursued, right? And the sound of a shaken leaf shall chase them and they shall flee as fleeing from a sword and they shall fall when none pursue it. And they shall fall one upon another as it were before a sword when none pursue it. And you shall have no power to stand before your enemies. Now, this is what the Most High said he's going to do to Israel. All right. And you shall perish among the heathen and the land of your enemies shall eat you up. And they that are left of you shall pine away in their iniquity in your enemies' lands, and also in the iniquities of their fathers shall they pine away with them, if they shall confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers with their trespass, which they trespassed against me, and that also they have walked contrary unto me, and that I also have walked contrary unto them, and have brought them into the land of their enemies. If then their uncircumcised hearts be humbled, and they then accept of the punishment of their iniquity, then will I remember my covenant with Jacob, and also my covenant with Isaac, and also my covenant with Abraham will I remember, and I will remember the land. The land also shall be left of them, and shall enjoy her Sabbath, while she lieth desolate without them, and they shall accept of the punishment of their iniquity, because even because they despise my judgments, and because their soul abhorred my statutes. And yet for all that, when they be in the land of their enemies, I will not cast them away. Neither will I abhor them to destroy them utterly and to break my covenant with them, for I am the Lord their God. But I will for their sakes remember the covenant of their ancestors, whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt in the sight of the heathen, that I might be their God. I am the Lord. These are the statutes and judgments and laws which the Lord made between him and the children of Israel in Mount Sinai by the hand of Moses. Now, as Christians, you understand now that if Israel does not keep God's commandments, that God said, you walk contrary to me, I will walk contrary to you. I'm going to be the one that raise up an enemy against you. I'm going to be the one that's going to be the one punishing you until you confess that you have you walk contrary to me and that your forefathers walk contrary to me. I'm going to be that one that's doing this to you. Right? So now we go back to what this propaganda that I just showed y'all at the beginning. We stand with Israel. We stand with Israel. We stand with Israel. Who are you standing with Israel against God? Yah, the Most High Yah, you think you can protect Israel from him? He's the one that said he was going to do this. So what is all this we stand with Israel stuff that you're being taught in these Christian churches? Huh? What is all of that? They don't even know the covenant. They don't even know who Israel is. Israel got scattered. When, when they talked about eating your sons and your daughters, guess what happened in AD 70 when they surrounded, they, when they surrounded uh, Jerusalem? When, when they surrounded and starved all the people in there, they ended up start eating their children. Hmm? Remember what Jesus said, all right? I want you to see something. Remember what Jesus said was going to happen to Judah. Because remember, the 10 tribes had already got kicked out. So I'm going to show y'all what happened when the 10 tribes got kicked out. And then we're going to talk about what Jesus said about the southern kingdom. All right. So now let's go to 2 Kings chapter 17. All right, 2 Kings chapter 17, verses 13 through 41, and it reads, 
Yet the Lord testified against Israel and against Judah, right? So this is when the kingdom had got split, right? So you had the northern kingdom that was considered Israel, Judah and, and Levi and Benjamin, who was considered the southern kingdom, okay? By all the prophets and by all the seers saying, turn you from your evil ways and keep my commandments and my statutes according to all the law, which I commanded your fathers and which I sent to you by my servants, the prophets, right? So the Most High starts sending the prophets and telling the people, y'all got to turn from your ways or else I'm going to have to punish you, right? Notwithstanding, they would not hear, but hardened their necks like to the neck of their fathers. They did that did not believe in the Lord, their God. And they rejected his statutes and his covenant that he made with their fathers and his testimonies, which he testified against them. And they followed vanity and became vain and went after the heathen that were round about them, concerning whom the Lord had charged them that they should not do like them. Don't do what they do. They're not under the law. They don't have the commandments that you have. They're not. We don't have. I don't have an agreement with them like I have with y'all. Right. And they left all the commandments of the Lord, their God, and made them molten images, even two calves and made a grove and worshiped all the hosts of heaven and served Baal. So we just read, you know what I mean? What the Most High said he would do to them in Leviticus 26. So now what do you think that the Most High is going to do to them based off of what we just read? OK. All right. They're doing things that the Most High said not to do. So what did he say he was going to do, right? And they caused their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire and use divination and enchantments and sold themselves to do evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. Therefore, because they done that, therefore, the Lord was very angry with Israel and removed them out of his sight. So he kicked the 10 tribes out. There was none left but the tribe of Judah only, but it was Judah, Levi, and Benjamin, Okay. Also, Judah kept not the commandments of the Lord their God, but walked in the statutes of Israel, which they made. And the Lord rejected all the seed of Israel and afflicted them, right? And delivered them into the hand of spoilers until he had cast them out of his sight. Well, ain't that what he said he was going to do? And what did he say? Once I kick you, kick you out, even when you go into your enemy's land, my hand is still going to be against you, right? Verse 21, for he rent Israel from the house of David and they made Jeroboam the son of Nebat king. And Jeroboam drained Israel from following the Lord and made them sin a great sin. For the children of Israel walked in all the sins of Jeroboam, which he did, they departed not from them. Jeroboam made those calves and got them in trouble until the Lord removed Israel out of his sight, as he had said by all his servants, the prophets. So was Israel carried away out of their own land to Assyria unto this day. And the king of Assyria brought men from Babylon and from Kutha and from Ava and from Hamath and from Sepharbim and placed them in the cities of Samaria instead of the children of Israel. So this is why when Jesus had a problem with the woman at the well of Samaria and they was like, y'all don't have nothing to do with us because they wasn't the real Israelites. All right. The king of Assyria brought men from Babylon and from Kutha and from Ava and from Hamath and from Sepharbim and placed them in the cities of Samaria instead of the children of Israel. Right. So this is why when you when you read about, you know what I mean? The good Samaritan. These are people that wasn't even Israelites, you see. So instead of the children of Israel and they possessed Samaria, Samaria was a city and dwelt in the cities thereof. That used to be the capital of the northern kingdom, Samaria. Right. So this is what happened. Now you got all these fake people who assume the identity of the 10 tribes. OK, so these people aren't the real Israelites. OK. And so it was at the beginning of their dwelling there that they feared not the Lord. Therefore, the Lord sent lions among them, which slew some of them. Remember, God said he would send a beast in there to kill them. So even though these are not the children of Israel, you have taken your butt into God's land. And when you took your butt into God's land, you don't know the law of the land. So now that you're over here, now the Most High is bringing judgment on y'all. So they didn't know, understand this, right? Wherefore, they spake to the king of Assyria, saying, The nations which thou hast removed and placed in the cities of Samaria know not the manner of the God of the land. Therefore, he has sent lions among them, and behold, they slay them, because they know not the manner of the God of the land. Then the king of Assyria commanded, saying, Carry thither, carry thither one of the priests whom you brought from thence, and let them go and dwell there, and let him teach them the manner of the God of the land. Then one of the priests whom they had carried away from Samaria came and dwelt in Bethel and taught them how they should fear the Lord. So this is how the Samaritans picked up the identity of the Israelites, thinking that now they were Israel, right? Howbeit every nation made gods of their own and put them in the houses of the high places which the Samaritans had made, every nation in their cities wherein they dwelt. 
and the men of Babylon made Sukkoth Binoth, and the men of Kuth made Nergal, and the men of Hamath made Ashima, and the Abites made Nibhaz and Tartak, and the Sephavites burnt their children in fire to Adrimelech and Anamelech, the gods of Sepharvian, right? So they feared the Lord and made unto themselves of the lowest of them priests of the high places, which sacrificed for them in the houses of the high places, right? So they were doing things there that they ain't had no business doing, right? They feared the Lord and served their own gods after the manner of the nations whom they carried away from thence. Unto this day they do after the former manners. They fear not the Lord, neither do they after their statutes or after their ordinance or after the law and commandment which the Lord commanded the children of Jacob, whom he named Israel. So you had a bunch of phonies in the land, right? With whom the Lord had made a covenant and charged them, saying, You shall not fear other gods, nor bow yourselves down to them, nor serve them, nor afflict, nor sacrifice to them, right? But the Lord who brought you up out of the land of Egypt with great power and a stretched out arm, him shall you fear and him shall you worship, and to him shall you do sacrifice. And the statutes and the ordinances and the law and the commandment which he wrote for you, you shall observe to do forevermore, and you shall not fear other gods. And the covenant that I made with you, you shall not forget. See that? Neither shall you fear other gods, but the Lord your God you shall fear, and he shall deliver you out of the hand of all your enemies. Howbeit they did not hearken, but they did after their former manner. So these nations feared the Lord and served their graven images, both their children and their children's children, as did their fathers, so do they unto this day. Right? Now let me go show you something that Yahusha, Jesus, had talked to the Samaritans when he told what he told the Samaritan woman at the well of Samaria. All right, let's pick this up in John chapter 4. And it reads, when therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisee had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not, but his disciples, okay? He left Judea and departed again into Galilee, and he must needs go through Samaria, right? Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph, right? Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. They're coming from woman of Samaria to draw water. Now, remember, these are not the real Israelites because they had already got kicked out, right? Jesus said unto her, give me to drink. For his disciples were going away into the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, how is it that thou, being a Jew, ask his drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria, right? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. So you see, this is why the Jews didn't have any dealings with the Samaritans because they wasn't the real children of Israel, Right? So she was basically, so she's like, why are you asking me for drinking? Jesus is like, <laughs> Jesus answered and said unto her, if thou knewest the gift of God and who it is that saith to thee, give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman saith unto him, sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou this living, hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle? So you see, remember, they had people that went in and taught them that they were the Israelites when they were not the Israelites, right? Jesus answered and said unto her, whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman saith unto him, sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Jesus said unto her, go call thy husband and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, thou hast well said, I have no husband, for thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband, and that says thou truly. The woman saith unto him, sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Why? Because she's like, how the heck do you know all this about me? I don't even know you, right? Our fathers worshiped in this mountain, and you say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Why? Because the southern kingdom knew that they were supposed to go to the place that the Most High set his name at which was in Jerusalem, right? But the northern kingdom, when Jeroboam had made those calves and that images, he had them people going up there to Samaria, worshiping those, those golden calves, right? Which got the real Israelites kicked out. So this is what Jesus said to her when she said, our fathers worship in, in this mountain. And you say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said unto her, woman, believe me, the hour cometh when you shall, shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the father. You worship, you know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews, right? He said that to her because she was not a true Israelite, right? 
You worship, you know not what. You don't even know God, right? We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. Because remember, Jesus is still with the southern kingdom who had been brought back from the, from the Babylon, right? Judah, Levi, and Benjamin, right? But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. So this is where Christianity comes in, right? It's about you worshiping the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman saith unto him, I know the, that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus said unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. And upon this came his disciples and marveled that he talked with the woman, yet no man said, what seekest thou, or why talkest thou with her? All right, so you see. Now what you understand is the northern kingdom had their identity stolen. The southern kingdom, after when Jesus in Luke 21, 24 said, when you see Jerusalem surrounded, you know what I mean? You're going to be carried away captive into all nations. You're getting out of here too, Judah. Levi and Benjamin. Why? Because y'all don't believe in me. I am your atonement now. Ain't going to be no more sacrificing. Destroy this temple. The temple is going to be destroyed, right? But the new temple is going to be me because I'm going and then I'm going to raise this temple up in three days, right? So the bottom line is now you have to understand you only get atonement not through taking the animal sacrifice of a lamb to the priest and having them sacrifice for you. You only get your atonement through Christ, right? Let me show you that. Let's go into the Gospel of John. All right, next let's go to John chapter 8, verses 21 through 24, and it reads, Then said Jesus again unto them, he's talking to the Jews, right? I go my way, and you shall seek me, and shall die in your sins. Whither I go, you cannot come. Then said the Jews, will he kill himself? Because he said, whither I go, you cannot come. And he said to them, and he said unto them, you are from beneath, I am from above. You are of this world, I am not of this world. I said therefore unto you, that you shall die in your sins. For if you believe not that I am he, you shall die in your sins. All right, next let's pick it up back in Luke 21, 20, 20 through 24. I mentioned this, but let's go pick it up. And when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is not. So remember what the Most High told them. Y'all break my covenant after a while, you don't whatever, I'm kicking you out of here. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out, and let not them that are in the countries enter therein too. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. For there shall be great distress in the land, and wrath upon this people. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles, right? Until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So now, what do we have going on? See, when you, you see all these scriptures and you understand all this stuff, right? You begin to understand. You had Gentiles who came down into Jerusalem in 1948. The same way how, you know, the northern kingdom got kicked out. And then guess what happened? You had all of these imposters that came and got taught that they were the children of Israel in Samaria, right? In the northern kingdom. But they wasn't the real Israelites. Well, the same thing happened in 1948. You got these Gentiles who came back into the land claiming to be the Jews, the true Yahudim who got kicked out, you know what I'm saying, way back in AD 70, right? And end up getting scattered. And like the Most High said, I'm going to scatter you into the land of the heathen. So the reason why you have to understand the covenant, because the covenant tells you who the people are, who are the real Israelites, who got scattered, taken and sold as bond men and bond women all over the world and never got redeemed, never got brought back, who got hung on trees, who, you know what I mean, was sowing a field and wasn't eating the fruit thereof. Who, got, who did all that stuff happen to, right? It did not happen to these so-called people who came down. But Jesus also told us that why the true Jews would be carried away captive into all lands, he also told us that, the, that, Jew, that Jerusalem would be trodden down by Gentiles, people who were not the true Israelites. You see what I'm saying? That's why when we go into Revelation 2 and 9, Revelation 3 and 9, we see where it says about Jews who say they are Jews and are not, right? Now, what you have over there is these people now, remember what Jesus told them. You know, remember when the northern kingdom came in, when these other imposters came in here, it didn't matter. God still sent wild beasts at them. 
right? Why? Because y'all know not the manner of the God of the land. So now you got these people that's coming in here, and then you got these, these so-called Christians, you know what I mean? You're supposed to at least tell these people, if you think they're the Jews, you're supposed to at least tell them that, you know what, y'all got sin on you, and without Christ, you ain't got no atonement. If you don't believe that he is he, then guess what? Your sins are on you. If your sin is on you, then the wrath of God is on you. So you're going to get destroyed. So how are you a Christian talking about you standing with Israel and you love Israel when you won't even tell these people that, you know what, y'all don't know the manner of the God of the land. You got to accept the Messiah if you're going to be over there. Right? But they ain't telling them. So what does that tell you about these so-called people calling themselves Christians? Telling you and then making these little productions saying, we stand with Israel. These Christian Zionists is just worse than the, as, the, as the Jewish Zionists. And, they, and then here's the crazy part about it. I'm going to show y'all this clip. You got Jewish people who don't agree with the state of Israel, the Zionists. They don't agree with them. Let me show you. Jewishness was a destructive doctrine that needed to be eradicated. And the Zionists did their best to eradicate it. They wanted to repeal and replace Judaism, to replace religion with nationalism, to replace the Talmud with tanks, and to change the people of the book to the people of the bomb. So they obtained a state, and they declared this state to be the nation state of the Jewish people. They created a language, Ivrit, and they decided, they decided it's the language of the Jewish people. They made an army, and they decided that this army is what defends the Jewish people. But the Jewish people have no state. We have no national language, and there is no army of the Jews. What they created is a statehood, but it doesn't possess any aspect of Jewishness or Judaism in any form or matter. The truth is that the state of Israel has as much to do with Judaism and Jewish identity as China or Korea does. They should stop calling themselves Israel and stop calling them a Jewish themselves a Jewish state because those are lies. They can call themselves, if they want, Herzlstan the nation state of the Herzl Stanis. Or they can call themselves the Canaanim if they want. They can call themselves whatever they want, but they are not Israel and they are not the state of the Jews. For over a hundred years, for over a hundred years, this assault on our identity has raged. And the Zionists have used many ways and means to repeal and replace Judaism. But the strongest weapon throughout the years that they've used was indoctrination, propaganda. And the strongest tool of propaganda is their army. The Israeli army is not merely a military organization. The Israel set up its military to be an indoctrination camp for Zionist ideology. It's designed to be an educational institution, not merely to teach its recruits how to shoot, but to teach them how to be Zionists. Not merely to show their soldiers how to serve the Zionist country, but how to serve the Zionist gods. Israel's army is a church of Zionism. And to the state of Israel, I have advice. You have two paths in front of you. You can either rescind all the laws, the loopholes, the terms, and that shtick you have that forces the Jews to go through your indoctrination camps. Your second option is to build more jails, because you're going to need them. So y'all see, <laughs> they don't even agree with them, right? They don't even agree with the state of Israel. Why? Because they know y'all are doing these things out here and killing these people and murdering these Palestinians, and this is making us all look bad, right? But now also what you got is you got Christian Zionists who are coming up with this propaganda telling people, yeah, we stand with Israel. You ain't even telling, telling the Christians what this is all about. You don't even understand what this is all about, right? So I got another clip. Let me show you this, this American Christian who over here trying to tell people we stand with Israel. How are you going to stand with Israel? You stand with Israel? You standing against the Most High? 
These people over there in sin, they don't even accept Yahusha, Jesus, right? I'm going to show y'all a clip of that too. But go ahead, let me let me show y'all this, this guy. J. Micah Hancock here for All Is Real News. And today we're sitting here with Brian Sanders. Uh, Brian is the director, uh, executive producer for uh, the film, Why Stand With Israel. And uh, Brian, you came here for the Jerusalem Prayer Breakfast, right? Uh, yes, and also for our world premiere that we had uh, on the first day of the Jerusalem Prayer Breakfast. And we've had other screenings in the land since we internationally released our film on Israel's birthday, May 14th of this year. And so we're just blessed with the opportunity to share God's story, God's heart, for why he chose the Jewish people, the nation of Israel in this film. And, and that's really our prayer that they would see God's heart on display of why he made an everlasting covenant with the one people on, group on earth and the only nation on planet earth that Christians are been grafted in with. So that's our prayer that they would see God's heart on display of why he chose his beloved people and land. Um, Brent, you have a, a long career in, in media, um, radio, TV, uh, you were telling me you worked for the, the military, you worked for CBN. Um, what led you to want to make this film? Well, in 2013, I was asked by CBN to come out and film President Obama's only visit here. And uh, it's been an answer prayer to always come to Israel. And then coming here uh, in the midst, it might've been after President Obama's interview, a good friend of mine, took me around the old city, you know, looking at just the history here. And we had a great theological debate and it was healthy. He's a good friend of mine, but he challenged me and he said to me, you might have some replacement theology. And at that time, I didn't even know what that was. And I, I said to myself and to him and to, actually to the Lord, I had this conversation with the Lord. And I said, did I take your word out of context? Did I add or subtract from your word? Did I misquote it? So I said, Lord, show me. And apparently he, he made it very obvious that I, I did have some replacement theology in, in me. And, and I, I know you know what that is. And, but for your audience that might not know what that is, it's this notion that the global church believes that God replaced his covenantal people and land with us, the church. And that couldn't be any further from the truth of his word and his character. I mean, Numbers 23, 19 is apparently clear. You know, it says that God is not a man that should lie or change his mind. Where do we, as believers, who say we love his word, twist it and say, we're the new chosen, we're the new Israel. He makes an everlasting covenant. It's for a thousand generations, as Deuteronomy uh, 7, 9 says. It's forever. It's eternal. He doesn't break his covenants. He's a covenant-keeping God and Father. And so I realized that I had this. I quickly and immediately repented. And then I also found that I had some uh, anti-Semitism in me, even as a believer at the time of about 25 years, that was kind of packed down over the years based on my upbringing where I lived, uh, I'm originally from New Jersey. But I also found that I wasn't alone. I found out that there's a majority in the church that has replacement theology. And um, I, I'm reminded of what Romans 11 says, you know, there's a partial blindness over Israel. I believe there's a partial blindness over the church. Yeah. And I believe that's because of replacement theology. Now, again, this isn't a film to condemn the church anyway. It's really just to educate and inspire them to live out their biblical responsibility to stand with Israel. Uh, God's the apple of God's eye, uh, his treasured possession. It's the only people and nation that has these endearment love like nicknames. And so if he stands with them and loves them, we ought to do the same. Because the Jewish people will never follow a Messiah, ever, who takes us away from the law of Moses, which is why Jesus Christ is rejected by Jews today. People are baffled by that. But he raised people from the dead. Well, first of all, he didn't, Yeshua did, but that's another discussion. But even if you say, well, he, I don't care if he made a whole new world out there with a new moon and, and it, it like suddenly appeared next to our earth, we still wouldn't believe in him. You know why? Because even if he does the greatest miracles but leads us from the Torah, according to the Bible, he's a false prophet. What's up, everybody? What's up, Imuna Nation? So I was thinking about a certain thing that's written in the Talmud, in the Gemara, and it says that uh, it says that 
Jesus, Yeshu, is in hell, boiling in a pit of his own excrement. And those things are written in the Talmud when it talks about Jesus and it says that. So a lot of a lot of um, Christians and Jesus believers are are saying like, oh, wow, the Talmud is so evil. Then if it says that, then for sure it's wrong. But I just, uh, it came to me so clearly what exactly that means and what it means that he's boiling in his own excrement. And uh, if you think about it, like what is excrement? Our, our uh, like how we, it's kind of foul, but like how we go to the bathroom, like, like what is it? And what it is, it's it's our waste. It's uh, it's our it's a uh, it's our junk. So you see, you got some of the Jewish people who don't even support the state of Israel, right? Not to mention, you got some of the Jewish people who don't even accept Jesus as being Lord or Messiah or Christ, and you got other of these Jewish people who say that Jesus is boiling in a pot of his own excrement, right? in hell right so why do you have christians not telling christians what i just told you right why is it that this all of a sudden you can tell people that this is what god brought back to the land these people who are over here sinning and being homosexuals and killing people and lying and cheating and they have no atonement for their sins and now you wonder why they got rockets and all this stuff because the covenant said if you come into his land and you trespassing and doing all this stuff if he kicked out his real israel israelites makes you think he ain't gonna kick these imposters out right so now let's go to the scripture all right john chapter 3 verse 17 and 18 it reads for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he have not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. All right, John chapter three, verse 35 to 36, and it reads, the father loveth the son and hath given all things into his hand. He that believeth on the son have everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. So now you tell me what is, it says the world. And it says he that believeth versus he that believeth not. That specifically tells you these people that don't believe have the wrath of God on them. So why are you telling Christians that they're supposed to stand with these people who are not standing with Yahusha, Yahawasha, or Jesus. How are you not standing with your atonement, but you're gonna stand with those who reject your atonement? You see what I'm saying? Makes no sense. So why is America involved in this? Hmm? You see, America has a vested interest. Let me show y'all this. In order to expand the power of the U.S. empire and to prop up imperial protectorates like Israel, which is an extension of the U.S. empire, or as the former U.S. Secretary of State Alexander Haig said in the Reagan era, Israel is an unsinkable aircraft carrier for the U.S. empire. Or as Biden himself has said for decades, if Israel didn't exist, the U.S. would have to create Israel. Were there not an Israel, the United States of America would have to invent an Israel to protect her interest in the region. The United States would have to go out and invent an Israel. I, uh, I've often said, Mr. President, if there, uh, were, if there were not an Israel, we'd have to invent one. Long said, if Israel didn't exist, we'd have to invent it. Now, there are some people who argue that the U.S. doesn't want to expand this regional war and that Israel is dragging the U.S. into a new war. I think that's completely wrong. That's the narrative that, that the Biden administration is trying to craft. The Biden administration is using some of its loyal stenographers in the media to claim 
we want peace and a ceasefire, but it's big bad Benjamin Netanyahu who is just pushing for more and more war. But in reality, there are so many reports showing that the Biden administration has been encouraging Israel, pushing Israel to expand this war. Politico revealed this in an article titled, U.S. officials quietly backed Israel's military push against Hezbollah. This article notes that, quote, senior White House figures privately told Israel that the U.S. would support its decision to ramp up military pressure against Hezbollah, even as the Biden administration publicly urged the Israeli government in recent weeks to curtail its strikes, end quote. So the Biden administration publicly is saying one thing, whereas privately it's doing the exact opposite. Publicly, Biden claims we want peace, but privately, the Biden administration tells Israel, invade Lebanon, do it, go, you have a green light. So as you can see, Joe Biden, he done said it on numerous accounts, numerous occasions. If there was no Israel, we would invent Israel, which is exactly what they did. Thank you for watching. Y'all have a blessed and wonderful day. Shalom.